tell you this, that the Bible actually tells you what the word Egypt means. It's defined in the Bible. Read. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. We would go back into Egypt again, but what does Egypt mean? I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. The land of Egypt, which means what? Out of the house of bondage. Egypt or Mizraim, it means bondage. Right? So when we were in Egypt, we were what? In bondage. We were in slavery. Now go back to Deuteronomy 28 and let's see what mode of transportation we would re-enter this slavery on. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Or Egypt or bondage again with ships. Did our people go into a condition of being Bond men and bond women on ships? When? What point in history? You don't know? When did this happen? Look at this. What years, what, what, when did this begin, most likely? Huh? What is that, what is that? Come closer, come closer, come closer. When did this happen? This man has a cage around his head. Chains and shackles on his shoulders, wrists, and ankles, I'm sure. This man here has a yoke of iron on his neck. This man here is being sold on an auction block. When did that happen? 1619. The transatlantic slave trade propagated by who? The so-called white man. Now, are we reading that in the Bible? Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With ships will we go into this condition of bondage or being in a, a, a city or a country where we would be bond men and bond women on ships. Is this true? Did that happen? Did that happen? Did that happen? That's what you heard. You see movies such as Roots? That's not fiction. You see in movies such as 12 Years a Slave, that's not fantasy, that's world history. Children today are being taken away from even knowing about slavery. They've never even heard of it, most of People younger than 18, in school they never heard of it. Their parents never told them about it. They don't care about their history. Give me Jeremiah 17 verse 4. And they don't care about who they were prior to the slave ships either. We were reading about us being the Israelites. Moses wasn't talking to Negroes. Moses didn't, Moses didn't leave Negroes out of slavery. They were what? They were the children of Israel, and that's who we still are. Right? Now, we have been broken away from knowing our history. There are people who propagated that. It was a joint effort by a certain group of people. But guess what? This is prophesied about in the Bible also. Read. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. And thou, even thyself, Thou discontinue from thine heritage. Have your people been dis it sound like it's talking to you though? No. Have your people been discontinued from their heritage? How? They don't know the knowledge. They don't know the knowledge. Who's supposed to teach them the knowledge? Malachi 2.7. Mm -hmm. We are. Okay. Who who is we then? Uh, the Israelites, right? The men, the leaders supposed to stand up and teach our people the truth? First and foremost, they got to know it themselves. He didn't know it, he walked away. He's got to get less of it than you will, because you're standing here. And we're supposed to give our people what? The knowledge, read. Malachi chapter 2 and verse 7. For the priest's lips shall, should keep knowledge. And what is this knowledge that the priest's lips should keep? And they should seek the law at his mouth. The Preachers and pastors today don't give the people commandments and laws, do they? What do they give them? Feel good, sir. Clap your hands. Stomp your feet. Look at your neighbor. Say, I'm saying, neighbor. They don't give them what? Knowledge. They don't give them their history. They don't give them who they truly are in the Bible. They give them what? Drugs. That's all they're doing. They're sitting in the church and they're getting high. They're not learning about the true depiction of Jesus Christ, who's a black man, according to the Bible. They're learning about Caesar Borgia the second son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome, an Edomite, a so-called white man. Anybody with an earshot of me should have just heard me call white Jesus, who's actually Caesar Borgia, 
and Edomite, because that's what he is. Read that again. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. The people should be seeking to these priests back then, and as well as today, for the knowledge of God, the commandments that he gave our people. What do our people seek to him today for now? Isaiah 30. Huh? Material things, right? Soft language. Things that come down, that, that uh, dig easily digestible. Prosperity doctrine. Hey, do you believe that the Bible is God's word? So when the Bible comes oh, out, you're listening to God's word. He's talking to you right now. Read. Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book. Every one of these pages is noted with the words that God told prophets, not regular dudes writing stories. These men had the spirit of the Lord inside of them to write down specific words, word for word, down on a book, on a tablet. Read that again. Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, uh -huh. that it may be for the time to come, forever. Because, forever and how long? Forever and ever. Because guess what? This was written thousands of years ago, translated into English, King James Version. Now 1619 happened, we still have the book. And because the Lord told the prophets to note it in a book, we were able to read in Deuteronomy that we were going to slave on slave ship. And Moses warned us about that 3,000 years before it happened. That's how important this is. Read on. That this is a rebellious people. Also write down that the children of Israel are extremely hard-headed. They don't listen to nothing God said. Back then and today. Read. Lying children. They're full of lies. The pastors. Creflo Dollar said that Satan's job is to get you to keep the commandments. Everywhere in the Bible that you read about Satan, he's convincing people to break the commandments. Creflo Dollar is a lying child of God. Hey, read. Children that will not hear the law of the law. Everyone that walks past us when we're teaching them the right things according to God, they are lying children that hate and will not hear the word of the Lord, the commandments of the Lord, and the laws of the Lord. Read. Which say to the seers, the seers, the word seer, that's an old timey word for prophet. Because they see the vision for the people. They see the danger coming. They see the future. Read. See not. They say to the seers, see not. They tell us, don't look at me wearing pants as a woman. Don't look at me breaking the Sabbath. Don't look at me smoking cigarettes defiling my temple. Don't look at me ignoring my God-given history, don't see me, see not, read. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Speak unto us smooth things. What did you say a minute ago? Prosperity doctrine. Material things. They don't want to hear change, because if they hear change, give me X, three. If they hear change, they gonna go, wait a minute. I'm not going to be able to eat swine's flesh no more. Do you eat swine's flesh? You don't. What? You know, part person, do you have any other reasons why you would not be eating swine's flesh? I just don't. Do you eat shrimp? Sometimes. Let me read you this, and then we're going to give you some commandments. I want you to change your life for the better. I want you to be on this side in some time. I want you to come to the school and learn about your history. We're going to the school. We have schools, we have chapters, we have buildings set up all across the whole earth now. We got schools in Africa. Why? Because they didn't get every single one of us. Some of them are still there and they're being oppressed just like we were here by the so-called white man that colonized them in the 1800s. Britain, read. Acts chapter three and verse 19. Repent ye therefore. Repent. Turn back. Change. Why? And be converted. Because when you change, your soul will be converted. What is it? Convert. You've been to a bank. You ever been to a money changer? You change change into what? Dollars? You might have changed dollars into pesos. Ever been out of the country? Euros? Change means, a convert means to change, right? 
So when you keep the commandments, when you repent, you will change. Do you want to change? Or do you want to stay the same? Do you want to stay the same person that didn't know that he was an Israelite? Do you want to stay the same person who was eating shrimp and crab and pork and fornicating and so forth? Or do you want to become the godly man that God meant for you to be? Read that again. Repent, ye therefore, and be converted. It's not going to be easy. It takes steps. But guess what? One step leads to another. And if you have the effort inside yourself to do so, if you have the gumption to actually do what God says, guess what? Let me show you. Let me, hold on. Hold on. Read, the, read the rest of that. This is what will happen. That your sins may be blotted out. All of our lives are full of sins, aren't they? God destroys people, kills people for sins. He keeps people out of heaven for sins, aren't they? When Christ comes back, the people that didn't repent, we, matter of fact, it's going to say, read that part again and read on. That your sins may be blotted out. That God will forgive you for your sins, read. When the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Hey, brothers right here. Y'all got a minute, don't you? Brother right here. Hey, give me a second. Five minutes. About five minutes. All right, read the fire. Check this out. Learn about your history. Hey. I hope you don't got to go nowhere because now we're about to read some laws. Leviticus 11, verse 9. So you said you don't eat swine's flesh because of your blood pressure. Now, isn't that ironic? You know that in the Bible, God said not to eat that swine's flesh, right? You ever heard that in the Bible? So seven, you know not to eat it, but you said you don't eat it because of your blood pressure. Now, I find that ironic because... According to the Bible, God said not to eat it. Everything that God says not to do, he says not to do for a reason. So guess what? When people, our people eat swine's flesh, which we were forced to eat in slavery, what happens to them? Their arteries get clogged up, they die. Hey, my brother right here with that yellow, y'all got a family, y'all got five minutes to hear the Bible. Just five minutes, brother, let me hear. Watch this, watch this. In slavery, our people were forced to eat what? Chitlins. So the Edomites, our slave master, the so-called white man, he would take high on the hog, so to speak. The good parts of the, well, there's no good parts of the pig. But he would take all the good animals, the chickens, all of that, the cows. Then he would take the guts of the pig and throw that to us. Our people still participate in eating that. Our people have, I was in the store, Walmart, right? And they got pig's feet. Why would you eat the feet of the pig? Verse 7. Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 7. Does that even make sense? Read. And the swine, though he divide the hoof, and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. So pigs don't chew cud the way that cows do. What does it mean to chew cud? C-U-D. Chew up the cud. What does that mean, brother? Huh? I didn't. I did. He tried to be tough. It's okay. But read it again. And the swine, though he divide the hoof, and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. So pig, pigs do not take up grass, chew it, and digest it into four stones. So cows do. So we can eat cows. They sacrifice cows and bullocks and goats, do they not? Because God likes those animals. They're clean. But pigs don't, read. He is unclean to you. Pigs are therefore unclean to you. Meaning what? Start at read verse, read verse 2. What are we reading about? Read. Speak unto the children of Israel. This is verse 2. Say, these are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. God created the animals, did he not? So the ones that he says not to eat, there's probably a good reason for that. Now, verse 9. You said you eat shrimp. Read. Verse 9. These shall ye eat of all that are in the water. So, of water animals, these are the ones that you can eat. Whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. So, in the water, the types of animals that God said that we should be eating, the only ones we were allowed to eat according to his commandment is ones that has fins and scales. What type of water animals do not have fins and scales? Shrimp. A shrimp is actually a cockroach. 
It's literally, it's a bottom feeder. It's literally a water cockroach. It has the same anatomy, same legs, same exoskeleton, same bug eyes, same antennas. It does the same thing that a cockroach do when you lift up your refrigerator on it. It lives the same life and eats the same things. The little trash on the ground, crabs as well, the little waste disposal of the ocean floor. Literally, you ever seen crab mustard? You ever heard of crab mustard? Crab mustard is when you bake crab meat and this yellow ooze seeps out of it. What that actually is is the impurities and the toxins that circulate throughout the crab's system. Because they don't have a liver like us to clean. God made the animal to be trash eater, and then, really only up, up, to, up until the 1800s was it considered trash. It was fed, lobster was fed to prisoners in the 1800s. Did you know that? Because why? Everybody knew it was garbage. Then they said, hey, we can make a lot of money off this because we can breed them fast. Because they're, they're bugs. Then they said, oh, you want to eat fancy? Look at this. They open up the little charger, the little silver platter, it's steaming. And they say, oh, look at how it's decorated. They got butter all around it, lettuce and stuff like that. It's crap. It's a bug. You've been lied to. Our people were forced to eat garbage in slavery. And our people continue to do so now, even though we have a choice. Nobody's holding a gun to your head and forcing you to eat shrimp, forcing you to eat a bug, forcing you to eat crab that crawls along the ocean floor and picks off of dead animals. Nobody's holding a gun to your head making you do that. So when we read a law like this to our people, and they say, no, I'm gonna keep eating it. That's crazy as hell. That's crazy. Read it again. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. So let's think about some of the animals that God blessed us to be able to eat. You got perch, carp, corgi, what'd you say? Kroger, Kroger. perch, salmon, you got brim, you got all these myriad of fish. Uh, tuna, tuna's delicious. You have all this cornucopia of animals. But when we read our people these commandments out of the Bible, such as this one law, we read one law, and that will differentiate between the people that want to follow God and the people that don't. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.